guys, welcome to another video. You've got Mr. Everything English, and today we are doing paper two, question number four. The comparison. How do you compare source A and source B? How do you compare methods? How do you do this question? Let's begin. When we look at paper two, question number four, we are looking again at the whole of source A and the whole of source B. And this time they tell us to compare. Remember guys, when AQA wants you to compare, they tell you to compare. Now a comparison can be a similarity or a difference. However, 99% of the time, they will specify what they want. So for example, here it says, compare how the writers convey their different feeling. So we know straight away that we are looking at a comparison of differences. And what are we comparing? We're comparing the different feelings and their different perspectives. Now, the word perspectives, it means views. So we're looking at comparing their different feelings and their different views about their adventures in the mountain. Now, this question, as I said earlier, is a 16 mark question. And for a 16 mark question, guys, you are spending no more than 17 minutes. And in 17 minutes, guys, you're aiming to write two to three. Now, my advice is aim for three. You're aiming to write two to three paragraphs. Now, why are two to three paragraphs enough? Let's just look at a few model answers, guys. Here on the screen, guys, you have a model answer. And this answer, it got 16 out of 16. And this student simply wrote two paragraphs. And in the two paragraphs, they compared source A, source B, source A, source B uh, in both paragraphs. And they got 16 out of 16. Now, this question, guys, that is why I say you are doing 17 minutes, two to three paragraphs. And an important thing that I always say is we compare in the same paragraph. Now, what paragraph structure do we follow? You can't do pretzel. You can't do PL. You can't do P. Because all those paragraph structures are straight shoot paragraphs about one source. So when it comes to the paragraph structure for this question, I want you to think about the word pretty. Think about the word pretty. Now, I won't ask you what comes to your mind when you think about pretty. But just think about that word. Because that word is the paragraph structure for this question. We are doing pretty paragraphs. Now, when I say pretty paragraphs, guys, this is what I mean. We do P, R, T, and E. And then we do P, R, T, and E. And this is one paragraph, guys. This is one paragraph. Your first part over here, this is for source A. And your second part over here, this is for source B. Now, what this stands for shouldn't throw you off, guys. All it is is point, reference, technique, explain the effect. And then for source B, you do point, reference, technique, and you explain the effect. Now, for this particular question, because we know because we know that we are doing a difference at this point in the paragraph we insert on the other hand and that is the structure of each paragraph for this question this model answer here essentially follows pretty pretty um we'll go over the marks in guys in a second but that is the structure guys that you are aiming for point reference technique explain point reference technique explain and this shouldn't throw us off guys why for those of you who follow my videos for any length of time what 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 paragraph structure have i always taught pretzel pretzel is what i've always taught this paragraph structure is pretzel but split in two so for example prte for the first source is the first part of pretzel right that's your point reference technique and you give the effect. That's easy peasy, that's what we've done forever. Whether you do PL, whether you do Peter, that's still the same thing. You give your point, you give your quote, 
you find a method and you explain the effect of that uh, method. However, in this paragraph, in a traditional pretzel paragraph, we would then zoom in, pick a technique, explain the effect. However, rather than zooming in, after we've given our first effect of our technique, we then bounce across to source B. And because we're doing a difference, we say something like, on the other hand, if it's a similarity, you might say similarly, but you say on the other hand, and then you make an alternative point to source A. You might say in source A, they love the mountain. In source B, on the other hand, in source B, they hate the mountain. You give your quote, you give your technique, and you explain the effect of your technique. Now, at this point over here, when we explain the effect of our second technique over here, we're going to make references to this effect over here because we're going to compare. And comparison is when you go back and forth. So you might say, um, uh, in source B, the writer used a hyperbole, I'm making this up, to show how bad the adventure was. This contrast, source A, where they also used a hyperbole to show how much they loved it. So you make slight references back and forth between the two sources. Guys, this structure is all we are aiming to follow. A pretty, pretty paragraph. P-R-T-E, P-R-T-E. Minimum, do two of those. Maximum, do three of those. And this should be easy for you guys. Why should it be easy? You guys are used to writing pretzel paragraphs in five minutes. Now, we're essentially doing a pretzel paragraph again with an addition of that and you have what's 17 divided by three you have what, what is that five minutes and 40 seconds maybe something like that but you have a little bit more time so timing guys should not throw us off the paragraph structure should not throw us off and please make sure you compare in the same paragraph in the summary question we did a summary so we separated the two but now we're comparing we're going to go back and forth and your paragraph is much better when you compare back and forth in the same paragraph because it makes your comparison easier to understand now guys what's the marks you how do we get top band same thing as always the first thing you must do is you must be perceptive and you must be detailed guys that is the first thing that you must do you must be perceptive and you must be detailed. I've explained that before, but let's go again. Perceptive is when you give a unique effect, a unique angle, and you think out of the box. Detail is coming through your effect. Is your effect just one line or have you explored this further? Now, they clearly want you to compare because in the mark scheme here, they write the word compare. They are telling you that you better make sure you bounce back and forth between the sources. Now, what are the three things we mark upon? Number one, nothing new, guys. Nothing new. It's what you've done for paper one, question two, paper one, question three, paper one, question four, paper two, question three, and now paper two, question four. The same thing, guys. You have to analyze how the writer uses methods, how the writer uses techniques. Then you have to have a judicious textual detail. Basically, guys, it's looking at the quality of your quotes. And the last part, guys, is the comparison part. The last part, guys, is the comparison part. You have to show an understanding of the differences. Guys, you have to show the understanding of the differences. Now, I am not even kidding with you guys. If you just stick to the pretty, pretty paragraph structure, you will naturally tick off this mark scheme. Now, guys, how do we go about planning this question? So the question says, compare how the writers, oops, convey their different feelings and views about their adventures on the mountains. Let's go to the source and let's plan our responses. So guys, for source A, let's do one together. So let's look for, let's look for, um, the joint seem to share past each other with a sickening, grisly crunch. So that's my reference done. So remember guys, P-R-T-E. That's my reference done. Now, how does this present his perspectives about life on this adventure? Guys, this adventure was absolutely painful. 
and that is going to be my point so guys the adventure was painful now what's, what technique am I going to discuss here I'm going to discuss the onomatopoeia the idea of how his knee was crunching and the effect I never do it in the plan but in the effect I'll talk about how this adventure was not pain sorry was not fun it was super painful because he could literally feel his bones cracking and crunching um, by the sheer pressure of everything he was experiencing so now I've said that in source A the adventure is is presented as being painful I must find a difference in source B where the adventure is nice and relaxing everything is perfect I can use the quote where it says it was a perfect night clear stars and the moon that will be my reference so guys, if we're looking at P, R, T, and E, that is my reference. Now, what's my point here? How does this quote present the adventure? Guys, it presents the adventure as being serene, as being peaceful, as being calm. And the technique that I will talk about here is rule of three. And there we have my comparison. Whilst in source A, it was torture, it was painful, it was excruciating. In source B, it was calm, it was relaxing, it was peaceful. And all you would do, guys, is you would find two more comparisons. If you're aiming for two paragraphs, then of course, you do two of these. If you're aiming for three, you do three of these. But that's all you are doing. And for this question, it is an easy question. Why is it easy? Because when it comes to our technique, we have freedom it's the buffet we can pick out a language device we can pick out a structural device you can pick a word you can pick a phrase you can pick any method that you like now guys let's turn this into a paragraph okay guys i wouldn't normally plan like this in an exam but i've written like this so you can visually see how the paragraph will look the way i would plan in the exam is literally on the insert pick your quote pick your technique pick your reference pick your point and that's it. That's how we're planned. But here is a visual of how the paragraph would look. Now, guys, let's turn this into a complete paragraph for question number four. The source A, the mountain adventure, greatly contrasts the mountain adventure in source B the pain torture and suffering in source A is paramount and there you have my point complete. Let's move on. This is clear from the sickening grisly crunch. And that is my reference. Then I will introduce my technique. The onomatopoeia highlights how each and every step of the mountain adventure systematically destroyed the travelers they could not only feel pain 
but they could hear. The breaking and disintegration of their bones. This massively contrasts source B. After reading source A, you may never want to climb a mountain again. But source B makes you fall in love with mountain adventures. We learn how it was a perfect night clear stars and the moon the rule of three demonstrates how there was not only one but multiple qualities of this mountain. Furthermore, all qualities that bring peace And serenity and now let me just wrap up my comparison as a result the onomatopoeia demonstrates through a crunch how mountains are unsafe however the rule of three combats this impression through picking multiple qualities of life on the mountain. And guys, we can end our paragraph there. In your exam, depending upon how fast you can write, you're aiming for two of these paragraphs, which you can definitely do. Because if you're doing two of these paragraphs, that means you're spending about eight and a half minutes per paragraph, which is a lot of time. But a maximum is three paragraphs. There are model answers that are three paragraphs long, and there are model answers that are two paragraphs long. The main thing is making sure you're comparing. And we're looking at talking in detail about the methods, because that's where the question looks at. Hence why I made sure at the end I emphasized how in one, the crunch of the onomatopoeia, it was a single crunch, whereas the rule of three, it gave not one, not two, but three different reasons as to why the mountain adventure was amazing. Guys, 
pretty for source A, pretty for source B, and that is what you're aiming for in your exam. If you're revising, guys, you've now done, now done section A of your exam. Tomorrow, guys, we will go over question number five, which is the big one. Is it going to be a speech? Is it going to be a letter? Is it going to be an article? What's coming up in your exam on Monday? And how do you approach it? Guys, tomorrow we address question number five. So I'll see you guys then. Peace.